Uh, I can give you a clear example. Jimi Hendrix uh, died by drowning, believe it or not, but the newspapers had us believe for, for 30 years that he died from a heroin overdose. There was no heroin in Jimi Hendrix's blood. Uh, what happened was that he was wheeled in bed uh, to the emergency room at the hospital, and his lungs were cleared. You heard after the, the famous heroin overdose that never happened that he choked on his own vomit. Well, something had to make him sick. When the attending physician cleared Hendrix's throat, uh, Great volumes of red wine, according to the physician's own notes, came gushing out of his lungs. Uh, so, as I say, the official cause of death was drowning, but this information didn't surface for 30, 40 years. Unbelievable. Let me ask you this, Alex. Was it because they perceived these rock musicians as counterculture icons that could, like, force the, the population at large to descend into some sort of primal chaos? Or what was their whole problem with this? I mean, what? I think you've just defined one of the fears, but I think there's an overriding hatred of, uh, of their politics. In the case of Jimi Hendrix, he made a big mistake. He did an interview where he talked about going to Washington, D.C. and shooting up the place uh, with the Black Panthers. And uh, that got him in trouble because every one of these guys talked about revolution. And the people at, at the top don't want to hear this, right? And they take it seriously. When you're talking about revolt, uh, they go into motion. And that's when people start, start dropping dead. And if you remember in the 1960s, I'm sure you lived, lived through it, uh, followed everything. And you saw one, one political musician after another drop dead uh, until the end of the Vietnam War. And then things kind of settled down for a while, but you've seen it right up to the present day. Uh, Michael Hastings, for instance, 